Welcome to the new lecture series, Kabbalah Explained and Chassidus Explained. Authentic received wisdom you could rely on. Lecture one. Today we will talk about the introductions and some disclaimers. We're going to talk about what this lecture is about, who is it for, why is it so important, but first to resonate this with many people, why do I have to listen to this, what is this going to help me in my life, I just want to make a short introduction of the famous neurologist, psychiatrist, founder of logotherapy, philosopher and psychologist. Viktor Frankl, he said like this, he said the deepest drive of a human being is not pleasure, like Freud said, like Freud taught, not power, like Adler taught. He held that the primary motivation and drive of a human being is to find meaning in life. He wrote a famous book uh, called Man's Search of Meaning, Man's Search for Meaning. He was a Holocaust survivor, he went to the camps, he's a fascinating human being. Uh, he's passed away already, but um, uh, his work is very, very important. So again, he says the primary drive of man is meaning in life. And interestingly, interestingly he called religion the ultimate meaning. They say he would put, he wasn't a religious Jew, but he put on film every day, he was Jewish, <laughs> so was Freud and Adler. But he, he put on film every day, they say. And he called religion the ultimate meaning. So I hope that these lectures will enrich and bring more meaning in your life. So what is this about? The Torah was given to us by God 3,330 years ago. We studied at that time the laws, the Chumash as we know, the Bible eventually developed into Mishnah. The oral Torah was given as well at, at Sinai. The basics of the oral Torah which was later developed into the Mishnah, into the Talmud. However, the secrets of the Torah was not studied as it says in Tanya page 142b that Chachmas HaKabbalah was the wisdom of the Kabbalah was hidden in their days of old even from the great sages only a few people studied this secretly not in public as the Gemara says and it's the Arizal that wrote, that said, I'm sorry, the Arizal said that specifically, specifically in these last generations, the Arizal lived in the year 1534, approximately at that time, and he said that it's allowed and it's a mitzvah to reveal this wisdom. Taken from Hakdomus Harachavzal Lashar Hakdomus. And from time to time after that Rizal, this was revealed more by the Bashamtiv, which revealed Chsidis. And then the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, revealed Chsidis in Chabad. Chabad is Chachma bin Adas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to understand these concepts. To explain a little bit what he accomplished, the Baal Shem Tov, for instance, taught the importance of the three loves. Every Jew has in his neshama, in his soul, three loves, love of Hashem, love to Torah, and love to every Jew. It's a natural thing. The al Rebbe came to explain that the natural love is not enough, but a person is supposed to develop his intellectual understanding and appreciation of God Almighty, and through that, love Him even more and deeper.
the famous Rambam of the Maimonides in his great work, Mishnah Torah, which includes the laws of the entire Torah. So his first halacha is Yesaid ha Yesaidis v'amud achachmas leida shiyashem atzurishin. The foundation of all foundations and the pillar of all wisdoms is to know that there is this first existence and he brings everything else into existence. To know God, not just to believe, but to know. Knowledge is, is, a, is something you study, something you learn, something you understand, not just belief. And he goes on in explaining that through the fascinating world that God created, um, you could appreciate the wisdom and greatness of God. The verse says, Know the God of your father and serve him with a complete heart. If you want to serve God with a complete heart, you have to know the God of your father. It's not enough to believe, although faith is the foundation. But this faith you have to bring into intellect and understand God to the best of our ability. As we say every day in Aleinu, more than once, we say at least three times, Right? The verse in the Torah. You should know today and bring it to heart, that Hashem is the God. So again, know. Knowledge, knowing is knowledge, is, a, is something you learn, something you study, something you understand and appreciate. Back to Tanya. The end of chapter 44. He says, he writes like this, This is what man is all about. And the purpose, his purpose, meaning the purpose of his creation. To know the glory of God. And the splendor and beauty of his greatness. Every person according to his ability. And he quotes the Zohar, God created the world so that human beings should know him. So that's already rooted in the purpose of the entire creation. You might ask, the Zohar writes, and other sources, that we cannot understand God. We're going to talk about this, God willing, next week. The next class. So we will explore what we can understand about God Himself, His infinite light, how an infinite God created the finite world, right? How an infinite God, uh, endless God, limitless God, created a limited world, limited creations, creatures. How, how did that? How is that possible? So. This will be hopefully very fascinating. It's all in the books, it's all in the masters. I'm gonna to try to explain it nicely and well so that everyone can understand in English. With Hashem's help. So you imagine, for thousands of, of years, this was hidden. Hidden from 99% probably of the Jewish population. Today, it's possible and it's a mitzvah to study this and to understand these deep secrets. Amazing. It's here. It's in front of us. There's so many books available. We just have to bend down and drink. Who is it for? It's for every Jew. I'm going to try to make these classes like, um, you know, sometimes you buy sacks and it's one size that fits all. So we're going to try to make these classes <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but we're going to try to um, uh, gear these classes for everyone, whether you're a beginner, whether you never heard of these things, or whether you're, or whether you're advanced, whether you studied this already. I hope that everyone, even the advanced, will able to uh, appreciate. Uh, different things, understanding thing, concepts better, etc. As explained in many places, that chassidus is for every Jew. 
You could look in the Kutus Sichis, volume 10, page 106, volume 30, page 175, 175, and many more places. Even a Jew that knows very little of Judaism can and should learn these secrets. This goes even further. Also, women are obligated to learn this. And the reason for that is because women are obligated in the six constant mitzvahs. What are the six constant mitzvahs? 24-7, there are these mitzvahs that every Jew has to, has to uh, fulfill. One is believing in Hashem, God Almighty. Two, to believe in no one else. Three, to know that He's one. Four, to love Him. Five, to fear Him. And six, not to go astray uh, by the thoughts of the heart or what our eyes see. So, by the way, when a person when a person's heart tells them, well, how do you know this is true? How, how do you, did you ever see God? You weren't at the Matan Torah, etc. We're going to try to address all these questions. So, in these mitzvahs, women are obligated just like men. We know there are some mitzvahs that women are not obligated, although it's nice for them to do it. For instance, mitzvahs that are, many mitzvahs that are connected with time, like sukkah, lulav, uh, etc. But... Many of those mitzvahs, they're also obligated. But for instance, sukkah and lulav, they're not obligated. If they do it, it's beautiful, but, and it's important, and, and I encourage women to do it, but they're not obligated in, in these mitzvahs, in many mitzvahs which are connected with a time, certain time frame. However, these mitzvahs are constant. They're not connected with a certain time frame, and in the basis of Judaism, of a Jew's relationship with God. So therefore, women are obligated in these mitzvahs just like men. How do we... Fulfill these mitzvahs properly by telling yourself ten times, I believe. No. By really feeling it and believing it and understanding it. As the Rambam himself writes, a little bit further of where I read, a little further chapters, a few chapters further. Perhaps one chapter further, perhaps. What is the way of loving him and fearing him? It's when a person will think of the great uh, world, actions that... Creations that God created, he will see the great wisdom, Hashem's great, God's great wisdom, and love him and fear him, etc. So, Chsidis, which a lot of Chsidis explains Kabbalah, uh, explains these concepts a great uh, love of Hashem, fear of Hashem, a great, great length and breadth. So, they are obligated in these mitzvahs just like, just like men. Therefore, not just the women are allowed to study these great secrets of the Torah, but they have to study these great secrets of the Torah. Because only through, especially today, that we have this available through learning Chassidus, they could come to the true understanding which is needed for the fulfillment of these mitzvahs. This was said by the Rebbe in, uh, in Svadis. Tov Shem Vov, 1985, Chilak Aleph, first, uh, you could look it up in Hisvadeh's Tov Shem Vov, first volume, page 578. Also, Sichas Kedesh, Lamed Vov, Chilak Beis, page 724, and uh, I'm sure in other places as well. And this goes even further, my friends. Who are these classes for? Not only for men, Jewish men, not only for Jewish women. <laughs> kids, kids also, whatever they can understand, at whatever level they can understand, children. But even Lahavdil, even for non-Jews. Now this is quite a revolution, I think. But the Rebbe said, we know that in the 1980s, the Rebbe was uh, very strong about teaching the non-Jews their mitzvahs, the seven laws of Noah. And one of those mitzvahs is believing in one God. So 
So whatever is connected, the first few classes which we're going to give is definitely is connected with Hashem, with, the, with the, explaining Hashem, explaining how He's one. So it's clearly something that they could also uh, study and appreciate. And this is also spoken about in Tov Shemam Gimel, Yutes Kislev. Sif Yudal and Tesvav. So the Rebbe writes over here like this. Says, says over here like this. Yafutsu and Nesach Achutsu. We're going to learn soon that a very, a very big principle in, all t- in teaching this is, are the words Yafutsu and Nesach Achutsu. The words that Mashiach told about Shamte. We're going to learn soon about it. So, v'zeu achid shalifutz and nesach achutzah gam hamayon shebetera lira kamaskon al chosis chayav lagiel achutzah adlu moselam. It's not just the the bottom line has to reach the non-Jews that there's one God. No, but it, they have to serve God, serve the one God. With, in their way, with their seven mitzvahs. What means serve? Avedas Hashem, service. It's, it's service of the heart. It's service of, uh, it's Avedas Hashem. Aveda means, Aveda it means service. It means service meaning uh, a sincere worshipping of God must come from what? From a knowledge, from an understanding. And this is also understood from the verse, V'nigal kved Hashem v'rok al-basa yachtav kipi Hashem dibir that when Mashiach will come, every flesh will see God speak. The word of God that's in, in, every, in every creature. So what will be the, 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 the sight of every flesh, every human being? Not, not only Jews. Will be the glory of Hashem. So we have to prepare them for that through teaching them these concepts as well. Also the verse, that the, the, the nations sh- will go to your light, will follow your light, which is what? The light of Torah. That although Torah tziva lanu meisha, meisha commanded us the Torah, but nevertheless, there's also that part of Torah that's connected with the seven laws of Noah, including the one God, so that they will go to your light, so that they will follow your light, so that there's some of your light that they could also benefit from and be inspired from. Anything connected with Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Neich, with the seven laws of Noah, seven commandments to the, 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 the B'nai Noach, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, including the belief in one God. Why is this so important? I believe these, the, the study of these things are very, very important. <laughs> That's why I'm de- dedicating, um, I dedicated many hours preparing these classes. And uh, we're doing this for, for a certain reason. And, and wh- why, is this, why is this so important? They tell a Jew that keeps Shabbos, keeps kosher, uh, studies Torah, everything is fine. Why don't I have to study this? I could study Talmud, I could study Halacha. So the reason for the, one of the reasons for that is, so first of all we said, and the Rebbe writes in, the letter, in many letters to people, that said, my father was a good Jew without studying Chassidus. My grandfather was a good Jew without studying Chassidus. Why do I have to study it? The reason is because the darkness is much greater today, the spiritual darkness, and therefore we need more light. And it's, it's I wouldn't say impossible, but studying Chassidus is extremely helpful in the service of Hashem, of Torah, mitzvahs, the basic service of Hashem, to be a religious Jew, and to, to appreciate God, and the faith in God, and loving of God, and faith and, and fear of God, etc., to be a wholesome Jew, serving Hashem, and this feeling that this is his life, it's, it's very hard to do that today without learning Chassidus. So, in Keser Shem Tev, which is a collection of the of the Torahs of the Baal Shem Tov. Page four, 
he writes, the Shabbat Shem Tov writes in a letter that it happened in Rosh Hashanah Tov Zayin in 1746. He writes in a letter that he had an Elias and a Shema. His soul uh, was elevated. He was still a human being, a live human being, but his soul had an elevation. I don't know exactly what that means. I'm not uh, anywhere uh, <laughs> in that uh, world, but um, but that's what he writes. So what happened? His soul went up to Ganeid, although he was a living human being here. And he, his soul met in the Shom of Mashiach. And he asked Mashiach, hey, Masekosimar, when are you coming? And Mashiach answered the Shom of the Baal Shem Tev, Futsu Chutza, when you will spread your wellsprings to the outside. This became the, uh, one of the major mantras, one of the major quotes that the Rebbe would repeat many, many, many times that this that the coming of Mashiach is, is dependent a lot on teaching and spreading and inspiring Jews with Chassidus. Very, very, very important. But sometimes when you learn Chassidus on your own, even the translation, it's difficult, it's new kind, you don't understand, it's even sometimes you have classes, etc. So therefore, I hope to, to, to be of, of great service for many Jews that are in, hopefully that are interested, and hopefully will become interested in this, that they should be able to understand these things. Now we're not going to study from books. We're doing something a little bit unique. We're not going to study, let's say, Tanya chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter... No. We're going to study concepts. We're going to explain concepts. We're always going to bring sources. Always with sources. Pages, numbers, and page, page numbers, etc. And quotes. But... We will not study books, we will study concepts. That, I think, will uh, make it much, much easier for people to understand it. And then when you do study the books, you will be able to appreciate it much deeper. Okay, now a few disclaimers. So I just said about what these, what these classes will be. For instance, we will talk about Atmos, we'll talk about the essence of God, we'll talk about uh, the infinite light, or in Sof. We will talk about the Tzimtzum, the Arizal taught about the Tzimtzum. We'll talk about the, the four worlds. We'll talk about the Ten Sifirot, all these things, but not just talk about, we'll try to explain and understand these things clearly in English. And that uh, needs a lot of preparation with Hashem's help. Um, we'll, we'll go through this together. So, so, the first disclaimer is that these classes are in no way could be used instead of st actually studying uh, the books. Why? First of all, the book is the book. The, the masters, directed for the masters, is, 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 uh, is, is something very special. And there was always, our Rabbeim always spoke about Divri Harav, the words of the Rebbes, the words of the Tzaddikim, the way they said it, the way they wrote it. It's something very special. That's a special, special quality uh, of, 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 of inspiring the souls of the Jewish people, which no lecture could, could replace. But today, it's difficult for many to go directly to the books. So hopefully with these classes, you'll be familiar with these concepts, not just familiar, but you'll understand them. Well, the basics, the basis of these concepts, you'll be able to study the books much better. Number one. Number two, disclaimer number two. So I just went through all these things we're going to study. We're going to study more of Mr. Hashem. So all these things, for instance, uh, we're going to study about the Ten Sefirot, yeah? Many are familiar with the Ten Sefirot, the Four Worlds. What I'm going to explain is the basics of it. To, to, understand it base, to understand the basic concept, understand it well. Understand it clearly, hopefully. But there's many, many details that we're not going to go into, <laughs> because it, it's, it's never, there's no end. There's no end. So we're going to go through the basics, 
maybe in the future, maybe we'll go a little deeper, but we're going to start, or this is deeper, quite deep enough already. <coughs> we're going to go through, go through the base. For instance, we're talking about the infinite light. The infinite light, in, in the infinite light itself, there are many levels. We're not going to go through, we're not going to, we're not going to touch upon these probably at all. Why? Because it's complicated and it's, and it's just very difficult to, it's just going to take too much time. And we want to keep this to the basics and to the beginners. And even to those that are more advanced, when you understand clearly the basics, uh, it's much easier to understand the details. We're going to try to keep these classes to about a half hour, 20 minutes, 35 minutes, depends on the class. Uh, we're gonna try to keep it short so that working people, busy people, will be able to have uh, the time, a half hour, whatever it is, 20 minutes, a half hour, to be able to study this. I can assure you that these lectures, to the best of my ability, are authentic and adapted from the Rabbim, from the Masters, the real deal. And uh, with Hashem's help, uh, this, we should, uh, should benefit us in many ways in becoming better people, better Jews, and having a great relationship with Hashem. I hope you will join us on this fascinating journey. Thank you.